Good afternoon everyone, this is Bremster and today I'm coming to you with a puzzle called Jack of All Constraints by Shing Gaming. Um, this is a puzzle that was a bit contentious with my testers and a bit with myself where my testers reached out to me and said, can you see anything here? And there was some back and forth thing and stuff. So this isn't a fully blind solve. I've not end to end solved this puzzle, um, but I've seen some bits of it before and I've looked for some logic in some partially solved grids. So I don't know what to call this one. Um, one that stumped some of my testers is definitely um, something to call this puzzle. So we'll see how we go. Before I get onto the puzzle, um, there's quite a few things um, I need to, well, a couple of things I need to go through. One, just before this came out, you should have seen five puzzles dropped onto the channel. Those are the solve guides for the Family Day Out puzzle pack, for which I am still accepting solution codes. How does that work? So um, yes, if you are struggling with any of those, they are um, solution videos that were recorded by full deck and missing a few cards um, when the videos uh, the puzzles were first released as a preview to my patrons but the puzzles are now available to everyone details to get the pack are below but you can now just go to the videos and pick them up there um, yeah many ways to find those puzzles um, the feedback to them has been really good um, yeah all of those details are, are now available on the channel many ways to find them the other thing is on patrons, I've had uh, a few new patrons jump in over the last week. I record a bit in advance. This is not news to most people, I assume. But um, Ulrich, Eric Holman and Palfrey Kampfling have all jumped in um, as uh, new Patreon supporters of mine. And I am very, very clear that there is no patron exclusives on my channel. As I've said, patrons have had a few previews. The pack, the Family Day Out pack. My patrons got access to it a week beforehand. These solve videos, my patrons got those, I think, five days before I've released them to you. Might have been six. Um, but everything will come eventually, and not with a huge delay. It won't be like three months later. Um, I do release stuff that I release to patrons very, very quickly um, to the gen to people for free, because that's the way I roll. Um, so um, now... Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that people who create puzzles and spend time creating puzzles shouldn't charge for those. They absolutely should. The Akash Dulani book that I'm giving away, that should be bought. That, those books are fantastic. Um, but uh, there is a to me, there is a difference between, I mean, if I made a puzzle book, um, I might release that to my patrons and then make it available for sale. But these mini puzzle packs and stuff, that no. And if someone sends me a puzzle pack to release, that's not my, I didn't make those puzzles. Those are not mine to sell. So yeah, I don't know. Um, but that would be a negotiation between me and the people who send me the puzzles, really. But um, yeah, it's, it's a weird situation and I think the puzzles should be free. Um, Unless, you know, you're doing it as a commercial enterprise. But the puzzles I've released so far, they should be free. That's the way I feel. Um, there's a lot of good puzzles out there. So um, that being said, please go check out the Akash Jelani books. Go check out the Ashish Kumar books. They, they are stunning. Um, and those Patreons, the, the Clover Patreon, the, um, the, the, there's others, um, are all, you know, Enthralling Sudoku, the, um, the Philip Newman Patreon, all of those are definitely worth supporting. So I'm not saying that you you shouldn't jump in. I'm just saying that, um, yeah, for me, this is the way I roll. Let's have a look at Jack of All Constraints, because this is going to take a while to go through. I would say if you are not familiar with the constraints in this puzzle, this might be a video to skip because there's a lot going on in this grid. Um, and I think that was one of the things that confused my testers. So yeah, if you aren't familiar with like all of these constraints, you, or if at least most of them, I think you might want to skip this video or possibly watch the video, but skip trying the puzzle. Um, in the rules above, I've put a summary because there's just too much to go through, but I'm going to quickly go through the rules. So let's do that now. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. On the green line, adjacent digits on the green line must have a difference of at least five because they're German whisper. Um, the uh, the purple red band line must be a set of non-consecutive digits, uh, non-repeating in any order. The beige lines are entropic lines, which means they must contain a set of, or each of those lines will have a low digit, a middle digit, and a high digit. On this between line, 
Um, the digits on the line will be strictly between the digits at the circles at the end. I'm trying to do this in order. Cell separated by an X must sum to 10. Cell separated by a V must sum to 5. Not all Xs and Vs are necessarily given. Cell separated by a black dot are in one to two relationship, or one is doubled the other. Cell separated by a white dot must be consecutive. Not all dots are necessarily given. Digits sum in, in cages must sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage if given. None is given. The digits may not repeat within this cage. Um, the clue, the a clue outside pointing to a diagonal, um, must those digits must sum to the number outside the diagonal. Digits may repeat on this diagonal if allowed by other clues. The sandwich clue, which is this zero at the top, gives the sum of the digits between the one and the nine in its respective row or column. So in this column, the sum of the digits on the blue line within a particular region are the same for all the re the regions that the line passes through. This could have been an arrow. This because that cell is the same as the sum of those, but it really just feels like what's been what's happened here is a lot of these rules could have been replaced by other things, but they've it's basically it's a force. Let's force as many constraints into the puzzle as possible. Um, digits placed on an arrow must sum to what uh, on an arrow is what sums to what is in the arrow circle. Um, digits on a palindrome line, which is the gray palindrome here, read the same in either direction and. I've, why these are beige, this is blue, This the palindrome line is grey. Um, digits in the maximum cell must be higher than all adjacent non-maximum cells. So this is higher than all of those. And should have said, I should have said orthogonally adjacent. The, the original puzzle set by this just said all standard rules apply. So yeah, I, I've tried to clarify that. But um, I've also been limited by the fact that there's a limit to the number of... Um, characters you can put into a rules box so i actually have had to remove words from rules to make this work it's been a real pain and did just place in the gray boarded square must be even they're the rules for the puzzle there's a lot going on here as i said if you aren't familiar with all of these rules maybe give this one a skip we'll see how it goes i'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer let's give this a shot now we know there's a five down here. Now, on a German whisper line, I don't know if I want to go into all the details, but you cannot put a five on a German whisper line because the five difference would mean that it'd be five lower or five higher. We also know that polarity is going to alternate along this line because of the five difference. Something lower will have to go high, something higher will have to go low. And we can't put a five on a V clue because it will have to be five and zero. So we also know these are from one, two, three, and four, and these are from one, two, three, and four. Um, this is from six, seven, eight, and nine. This is from six, seven, eight, and nine, which means this is from six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, if there's a five up there, there is a five on this line because the five here looks down, taking five out of all of those, and you can't put five on a black dot because there's no one to two relationship. It, five would only go to 10 because two and a half doesn't work. So there is a five on there, which means there's no one or nine on that. So there's a nine on here because I can't put nine on a black dot either. And I can't, if I was five, six, seven, eight, the highest this can go is eight. So nine is in here. Nine is not even. So nine is in one of those two, which means nine is not here. And nine is on this whisper line, which doesn't help me very much. Um, okay. Really not sure what to do here. Now, this is a four-cell uh, red band line, so there must be either a three or a six on it. So this can't be three, six. So this is from one, two, four, eight. And the reason it can't be is how would I get four digits? If I do one, two, three, four, I've got a three. Two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, four, five um, gets me a all use three. And then if I skip three, then four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, and six, seven, eight, nine, all use a six. So this can't be three, six. So it's from one, two, four, eight. So it's using either a two or a four. So three and six have to go down here somewhere. Now, actually, what does that do to this Renban line? If this is two, four, this is five, six, seven, eight. 
And I'm not sure. This could even be 4.8, I think. This could be 5. Hang on. If this is 4.8, what do I put on this line? Because then this would be 5, 6, 7, 8. That doesn't work. This can't be 4.8. There's no 8 on this line. So there is a 2 on this line. I really don't know where to look. I mean, how do you even get this started? So I can't put one in the REM band because then I'd need the two. Could I put one down here? Sure, I can't put it there. Could this be a one nine pair? I don't see why not. These are different. So if this is 1, 4, this is 2, 3. If this is 2, 3, this is 1, 4. I can't put 4 or 6 on this line. I can't put 4 or 6. So 6 is down here which puts six on this line. Because if I put six on this line, the only thing that would go next to it is two ones. And I can't put two ones on this line. So six is on this line. This is a higher cell than it looks like. Because it can't be one, two, or three. It could be a four. So that's from four to eight. Because it can't be a nine, because you can't put nine on a between line. But if this is four, this is five. This would then be one, four, and this would be two, three. I feel there's a lot going on down here. If this is 2, 4, this would be 1, 3, 9, and this would be 5, 6, 7, 8. If this is 1, 3, 9, it's probably an interaction up here that doesn't work. So these are all from high digits. These are from five, six, seven, eight, nine, because there's two low digits in here because of the alternating polarity, and there's two low digits here. But there's no nine there. This is from five, six, seven, eight. And there's two high digits on here, which can't include a six. So there's a seven. But I can't put a seven on this, can I? Because if I put a 7 on this, I'd need a 1 and a 2 next to it. So if this is a 7, this would be 1, 2. This would be 3, 4, which doesn't sum to 5. I can't put 7 on this. So 7 is here. This is 5, 6, 7. And this has 8 and 9 on it, which does mean that it could use any of the low digits except 4. Hang on, it can't use 4. This is 1, 4. And this is 2, 3, 8, 9. There you go. This is one four. So there's no four in either of those. So there's no one there, which means there's no nine there. One and four means this is six or nine, which means this is six or nine. If it's six, that is six. If, if these are six, this is six. If these are nine, that is nine. Which would put nine there. If this is six, this is six. And I'd have to put six up here.
Now, if this is, this has to be higher. And there's no one here, so there's no four. There. This is two, three, so there's no six here. This is that. This is the low digit now. I need to put a low digit on this line. So there is a one up here somewhere. If this is nine, this is one. Okay. Seven is now in here. So this has got five, six, and seven on it. So this is from four, five, six, seven, eight. So three is in here, and it's not there. This is a three, nine pair, because this is even. And this is what's not on the, this is four or, hang on, no, that can't be right. Yeah, I can't put one or two on here. No, I must have made a mistake there. I think I jumped to something that doesn't work. But there's no three on any of this. So three is here. This is from four, five, six, seven, eight. There's no three here. This is three, nine. This could be one. But if this is two, four... This is five, six, seven, eight. So this is one, four, or eight. Except it can't be one because it's even. So this is a one, two pair because the one has to be on here. I can't put it on the line. I can't put it there. Right. Because this is three, nine. Why can't one be down here? Because three can't be on this line. Because seven has to be on this line. So three can't be. So three, right. So this is one, two. That's weird. And this has the, the, the digit that is not on the end of that. So this is from one, two, four, and eight. Because five, six, three. Yeah. Five, six, seven. Three nine. These are one two four eight. So this is one two four eight, and it's not one or two. So this is a four eight, and this is a four eight. Four eight pair means there's no four eight there. This is a one two. That's nuts. I still don't know how to do this. There's no one or two on this arrow anymore. Or four. Hang on, there's no one, two, four, or eight here. So if I don't if if I don't use a three on this arrow, it'd be one, two, three, four, this would be five and six, and this would be eleven. So there's a three. But if this was three five, it would be eight, which doesn't work. So this is three six, and this is a nine. So these sum to nine, they can't use a two or a three. So they're either one, eight or four, five. So we know what these are. One, two, three, four, five, seven. These are a five, seven pair. Oh my Lord, I don't know where to look.
Sorry, I'm trying to figure out where to look. So this is from five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because it can't go down to four. But it could be any of those. So that's not the place to look. something with that I mean I'm looking at the sandwich clue but I can't see why that can't be one nine I can't see why that can't be one nine and I can't see why I can't put one nine in those so that's not it So these are medium and high, but I've already got the one, two, three. So that's not telling me much. What is going on here? There's a lot. Where is that digit in this row? That digit has to appear in this row somewhere. It can't be in those two cells. It's not there. It's not there. It's not in any of those. And it's not consecutive with that. So this is a two or a three. Which hasn't done much. But these are now from five, six, seven, eight, nine. That can't be a nine because it's consecutive with that. So this is from six, seven, eight, nine, because it has to be higher than that. One of these is higher than that cell, and one is lower. So four in this box is in one of those. But it could be there, and that could be a 7 or an 8, or it's on this line.
is this more restricted than it looks? Because they can't be one, two. They could be three, four. They can't be five, six, seven. Three, four, six, eight, nine. Because they can't be one, two, or five, seven. If this is five, six, this is seven, this is eight, this is nine. I'm going to put nine in one of those two. No, that's... Wait a minute, that can't be a seven, an eight, or a nine. Because there's a high digit here, there has to be a high digit on here, and there has to be a high digit on there. There's no seven, eight, nine there. This is five or six. Which means if this is a five, this would be five. If there was a five on here, this would be a five, six, and that would be broken. So there's no five on this. Right, there's a low, a medium, and a high. These were in tropic. Of course, this was a five, six. And now where is nine in this row? It's not in those, it's not in those, and it's not in either of those two. That's a nine, that's an eight. There's no eight here. There's no nine here. There must be a nine in one of those two. But I can't put it there because of that eight. That's a nine. Which puts nine in one of those two. There's no nine there now. This is still larger than that. It already is. Can't put the one nine up here anymore. This could still be one nine or this is one or nine. In fact, that's nine because I can't put nine... This is a nine cell cage, but I can't put, so it has all of the digits from one to nine in it, but that nine knocks nine out of there and that nine knocks nine out of there. This is a nine and there's a one in one of those two to make the sandwich work. That puts a nine in one of those two. This is not a nine, uh, which I got when that wasn't a nine because of the palindrome, but that makes these both six. That nine, which means there's no six in any of those. That is a six. This is now the nine, which takes nine out of those two. There's no six in either of those. Nine is in one of those two. Mm -hmm. 
Is that force to be a nine? If this is a nine, these would have a minimum sum of 13. But this is a minimum of three, actually this can't even be three, four. Because if these were 3, 4, these would be both 8. So this is a minimum of like 3, 5, which is 8. And if I do 8 plus 9, then I'm already at 17. These would have to sum the 2, but I've got a 4 there. This is not the 9. This is a 9. Which means this is a 3 and this is a 9. It puts 3 in one of those... So we know the 9 is in those two, so the 8 isn't in those two. The 8 has to be in one of those two, because the 8 and the 9 can't be next to each other. The 8 being in one of those two means there's no 8 here, there's no 8 here. 8 is in one of... No, that's not true. 8 could be here. If 8 was here, 8 would be in one of those two. If this is 1, this would be 2, this would be 3, 4, and that would be 7. But that seems okay. We know 1 is in one of those two, because the 1 can't be down here. Oh, this isn't an 8. So 8 is in one of those three. But I can't put 8 on this line, can I? 8 plus 4 would be 12. Yeah, I can't put 8 on this line. If I put 8 on if I put 8 on this diagonal, so if I I'm just going to draw a yellow line. So this little killer. If I put an 8 on this little killer in one of these two cells cuz 8 can't be here and it can't be here. And it can't be on the palindrome. Well, it could be there, but it can't be here because that can't be 8 because of the 8 looking down here. So if I put 8 in one of those two, I couldn't do 8, 8 because then I'd have three cells that would have to sum to 3. And I can't do those two. So that doesn't work, particularly considering the minimum here is 8. So these would be 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. I can't put 8 down here. So I can't put 8 in any of those cells. That's an 8. That's a 4. That's an 8. That 4 takes 4 out of those. There is an 8 looking up here, which kind of makes sense. That hasn't narrowed this down yet. So what are these? One, two, three, four, five, seven. Well, that's unhelpful. So what's this quadruple? One, two, three, four? Well, there's no three there. So three we already had in one of those. This is not helping me.
So we know there's no one on this line because the one has to be next to the one. So if it's five, it's two, three, which seems okay. If it's six, it's two, four. And if it's seven, it's two, five or three, four. So these are from two, three, four and five. Well, there's no six here. This is a seven or an eight because of that. Eight is not in any of those. So eight is in one of those. Two. Oh, eight's not there. Eight is right in the intersection of this box because those eights took it out of all of those. And I can't put eight on an arrow that sums to this. So that's an eight. So now eight is in one of those three. But this has to be the highest cell. If this was an eight, this would have to be higher. If this was eight, this would have to be higher. So these are not eight. This is an eight. And that has basically made that cell now useless. But I'm finding little things. There's no one here because of the one next to the nine up there. So one is in one of those two, which I already had pencil marked. I just hadn't used correctly. So we know these are five, seven, eight. So the nine is over here, the eight is over here, and they're going to be diagonally opposed to each other. Same with the two and the three. So I've got a virtual two, three pair in this row. No, okay, something else. So these are three, four, five, and seven. No, it's not doing it. Although maybe this diagonal is doing something. No, because these are low. I can get this, like if I make this four and three, seven, 11, I need another eight here, which I can't do. So I can't make this three and four, which I couldn't have anyway. Well, there is a one on here. There is a one on here. So if this is one, two, That'd be seven, and these would need to be 12, which I can do. If this is one, three, this would be eight. These would need to sum to 11, which I can do with a seven. And if this is one, four, this would be nine. This would need to be 10. So there's a seven on here, no matter what. That's weird. Now, one is in one of these, because I can never put a one onto a between line. Actually, I haven't looked at the between line anywhere near enough.
This is one. Oh, this six made this four and one so long ago. That one made that two and that one. The two takes two out of there and it takes the three out of there. That's been there for so long. The problem when you've got a puzzle with how many constraints does this have? 12 or something? Is it's really easy to miss one. And this is why I say people who are not familiar with constraints should, like very familiar with constraints, should just avoid stuff like this. Because it's so easy to miss stuff. As soon as I got this six, this should have been, I should have resolved that. Has it done much? It's given me those. What does that do? Well, it's taken three out of there. It's oh, that's a four. So this is a four. So it's taken four out of all of those. It's taken four out of all of those. So is it this diagonal now? If this is 7, 5, 12, 16, these need to sum to 3, which they can do. And if this is 7, 3, that is 10, 14, these need to sum to 5, which they can do. But either way, there's a 2 on that, right? So that's the 3. This is not the 3. This is a 1, 2. The 1, 2 means that this is 7. These need to sum to 12. So there's no 3 there. This is 7, 5. This is the 3. Which hasn't done much. There's no 4 here. But because I don't know what that is, four could have gone with two or three. Thirty-six minutes into this puzzle, I still feel like I have not cracked it. That's weird. If this is eight, this is three. This is eight, this is two. No, if this is eight, no, 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 no. If this is three, no, if this, if, if, th no, if this is eight, there's a weird interaction here. If this is eight, this is seven, this is three. But if this is eight, this is three. So if this is eight, this is seven. This is a, a, a basically a Y wing. If this is eight, this is seven, and this is three. But if this is seven, this becomes three. That can't be an eight. That's a three. So that's an eight. By alternating polarity, that's now two and nine. The two looks back making that the three, which makes that the two, which makes that the seven. There is no seven in there. The two makes this three, it means there's no three here. This four takes four out of there, so it takes five out of the one lower than it. This seven takes seven out of there. This is now mid. This has to be high, so it's 8 or 9, and it's not 8. This is the 9. This is not the 9. So we know what these are. These are 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, one, four, and eight. Well, there's no eight there. So eight is in one of those two. So eight can't be in here or in here. Eight is in here. So this is now a one, eight pair. So one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. These are four, five, and six. There's no four there because of that four. Still not. <laughs> so what do I have left? This killer cage? Three is in one of those two. Because I can't put three in any of those. That three sees those and that's an eight, nine. So three is in one of those two. Now, if that's a three, that's a one or a two. Okay. What are these four cells? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, or seven. Now, if this is a seven, now that's actually okay. Because this has to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Because it has to be lower than 4, 5, or 6. So this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Which is not that helpful. Because it has to be lower than that for the between line to work. If it was higher than this, this cell couldn't go on the between line. But this can't be a 1. I can't put a 1 on a between line. If this is a two, this is a one, but I don't see a problem with that. This would be a two, this would be a one, this would be a two, this would be three, four, make that a seven. Actually, this is a seven because of the five, six here now. This is a seven. So what is this? Two, five, or three, four? That all still works. It all still works. No, I was about to say, where is one in this cage? But it's there or there. Because I can't put it there, but it could still be in either of those. Is it this? Two can go anywhere. So got three, four is down here, five can go anywhere, six, I've got to put seven, which goes anywhere. That's not it either. This is not an eight. There's an eight looking across at it. So this is an eight. Which has given me nothing. Is that all the eights? I normally don't do this. One, two, three, one, two, three, eight. Now I've got an X wing on eights, which is fine. I've got a lot of threes. Three is in one of, oh no, this is a three. Where is three in this, in box five? Can't be in those cells, can't be in those cells. This three knocks it out of those cells and that's an eight. This is a three, so this is a four. Which means that's not a four. Four is in one of those two. There's no four here now, which has made it easier to fill that. This is a five, six, so this is a four.
Pardon me. This feels so weird, but I'm not... Again, this feels like a puzzle that was probably tested with... Because you're looking at so many constraints with the pencil mark checker turned on. I'm very tempted to turn it on for this. So, for example, this three is taking three out of here. There is... Right, that's six. See, there's so much to miss in this. And I don't feel guilty about using it in this puzzle because I bet you it was tested with it. This is one, two, seven. Trying to see where the pressure is. We know three is over here. One, two, three, five, seven. So this column, I've got to put a six either there or there. This five means this isn't a five anymore, because if this was a five, that it would this wouldn't be a between line. So this is a one, two pair. The one, two comes out of here. This is a five, seven pair. I can take seven out of both of those. This is a one, two, three. So what's this triple now? Five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, five, six, and seven. There's no one there anymore, so the one is looking across here because I can't put one in any of those because of the one because of the sandwich clue. Can't put one on the between line. Can't put one there because of the one, two pair. One is looking across. This is a four. This is a one. There's no four here. This is the four. I'm actually going to turn off the pencil mark checker for, for a bit. Not mark solve digits. Check pencil marks off. This one looks down taking one out of here. This is a two, three pair. So there's no two there. There's no two there. This one looks down making that seven and this one. That takes one out of here and puts one into here. The one in the seven, or well, the one looks across making this two and this one. This triple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, five, and seven. Well, there's no seven there. Two, three looks back making this one and this two. The one looks across making this eight and this one, and that was by the cage, by the way. This is a five or a seven. That's a five, seven pair. So I can take five and seven out of both of those. That's the two. That's the six. The six looks up taking six out of there. The two looks up making that five, which makes that seven, which makes that five, which makes that seven, which makes that five, which makes that seven. The seven looks across making that five and that seven. The seven comes out of both of those, making that a five out five, eight pair. That becomes the seven. The eight looks across making that five and that eight. This five looks across making this six and this five. The two looks up, making this one. This is not the one. Now this between line can hold anything but one or nine. These are one, two, three, four, five, two and six. And I'll use that two to make that six and that two. Now these are one, two and four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two and four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll use that seven to make that five and that seven. The five looks up, making that six and that five. The six looks down making this three and this six. The three looks up making this two and this three. And the two looks down making this four and this two. And that's the correct solution to jack of all constraints. 134 solves in 32.1 days. I will be very interested to see how many people manage to crack this one because that was tricky. And 
honestly, when I get a puzzle with so many constraints in it, I don't really enjoy it that much. I don't find puzzles like this that elegant. I find them kind of brute forcey. Um, yeah, I mean, I've set puzzles like this for fun. I have. I absolutely have. But I just find them sort of chasey. I, I, there's no real way to state it. But yeah, I mean, there was a lot of cool stuff in it. But at no point did I really go, wow, that was that was amazing. It just felt just too much stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, I hope that, I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. I really do. I mean, I love bringing puzzles to people and this was one of them. Um, and it's very well rated on Logic Masters Germany. So people like it. So there you go. Um, thank you to my new Patreon supporters. Um, thank you to people who submit puzzles. I really do appreciate it. Um, not every puzzle is for everyone, but my goal here is to try and bring puzzles to people based on what people might like, not just what I like. Uh, it's harder for me to bring a puzzle that I don't like to the channel, but I do try. And I mean, I didn't know what this was going to be apart from tester feedback and the testers know what I enjoy, but I did want to do this anyway. Um, please check out the solution videos for the Family Day Outback pack and all of that. And yeah, I mean, I hope you are able to struggle through this. And if you weren't familiar with all of these rules, I'm hoping that watching this video will help you become familiar with them for other puzzles. And maybe what you might want to do is give this a few days and then try this puzzle yourself. I would recommend that. It'd be a really good way to familiarize yourself with how a lot of different constraints can interact with each other. This puzzle would be great for that. Thank you everyone for watching. And as always, good luck with your solving.